Hello everybody, welcome to this let's play of Planescape Torment. So, I'm really not good at introductions, I'm gonna be brief. <laughs> this is a blind let's play, I've never played this game and I know very little about Dungeons and Dragons, I just finished playing uh, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, so this is <laughs> all that I know. <laughs> about Dungeons and Dragons, I have never played it, I just play Baldur's Gate, basically. It will be a slow-paced let's play, because I like to explore at, with my own timing and because it's blind, so I pretty much would like to experience everything the best as I can. I do roleplay, but do very frequently break characters, so if that's an issue to you, this is probably not the let's play for you. We'll be making one episode per day of this and each episode will be about 35 minutes or so. Some will be longer and some shorter maybe. I might forget to upload sometimes. I usually have the episodes, I just don't remember to schedule them. You will have to bear with that. I do edit my episodes. Um, I edit when I am interrupted and uh, when I'm taking too much time to make a decision, when uh, I do inventory, because uh, after the few first times it might be annoying. And sometimes, especially later in the game, I also edit when I'm leveling. By editing I mean that I cut, uh, because I don't want to have episodes, you know, 35 minutes of one episode where there is only inventory, or the majority of it is inventory, or leveling, or me taking two hours to solve a puzzle, or to give an answer to an NPC. Uh, another important thing that you need to know is that uh, by the time you are seeing this episode, I might be already recording episode, I don't know, 6, 10, 20, 25, you will never know, um, but I do have a schedule and I make sure to have the episodes uh, planned in advance. I have a mod installed. It's called Unfinished Business and you will find the link in the description as always. Um, if you are interested, please check out uh, my Arcanum LP because I'm thinking that this game might be really close to Arcanum. I have I have a feeling, but we'll see. And also Baldur's Gate, why not? And now I think we can move forward. So I have played a little bit uh, of this game at the beginning because I wanted to get familiar with the controls and stuff like that. I think I entered the, the second chamber, so I didn't really do basically anything. I wanted a tank. I wanted my own honey badger character. I wanted, I wanted a tank. But I see that this stat gives you... Um, more dialogue options, and I'm interested in that. I really like options, I like having many options. Wisdom as well seems very important, and I'm generally a charisma person. I like to play usually roguish characters that have very high charisma. Maybe it's better if I play tank at another time, another run and I concentrate on these three attributes. So, I've seen that once you have distributed your point here, you don't get to choose a class. In any case, I'm probably going for a rogue, for a full thief, or a mage. All right, guys, I have 15 intelligence, 18 wisdom, and 15 charisma. I don't know how this is going to work out. And uh, no name, because we are the nameless one, which is fine by me. Hey, Chief. You okay? You playing corpse or you putting the blinds in the dusties? <laughs> I thought you were a debtor for sure. Who are you? Uh, 
who am I? How about you start? Who are you? <laughs> I don't know, I can't remember. Yeah, it's pretty clear that uh, this guy has some issues with his memories because even the initial cutscene that was really intriguing, very intriguing, I have to say, I'm already interested, seemed to be um, revolving around the memory of a woman in particular of, or a whole village or some other people. It seemed to me almost as if he was accused of doing something bad by uh, some people. Probably, his vi I'm, I don't know, I'm thinking his village because I don't know, he looks like a barbarian lord, but he probably looks like this just right now because uh, in the cutscene he was also, he, he did also have a different face, uh, so yeah, it looks like he is now an undead, that's fairly clear. You can't remember your name? Uh, well, next time you spend the night in this burg, go easy on the pub. Name's Morte. I'm trapped in here, too. Trapped? Trapped? Yeah, since you haven't had time to get your legs yet, here's the chant. I've tried all the doors, <laughs> and this room is locked tighter than a chastity belt. Hmm. We're locked in where? What is this place? By, by the way, very intriguing place. It looks nice. All the little objects and the little things look very nice. What is this place then? It's called the mortuary. <laughs> well, it's a big black structure with all the architectural charm of a pregnant spider. The mortuary? What am I, dead? Uh, not from where I'm standing. You got scars aplenty, though. Looks like some bird painted you with a knife. <laughs> All the more reason to give this place a laugh before whoever carved you up comes back to finish the job. Scars, how bad are they? Well, the carvings on your chest aren't too bad, but the ones on your back... Morte pauses. Say... Looks like you got a whole tattoo gallery on your back, chief. Spells out something. I don't know why, but Morte is reminding me of somebody, some other character when... You know, this chief. I don't know which other game, though. But he's reminding me of something. Some, something familiar. Tattoos on my back. What do they say? Huh, looks like you come with directions. Morte clears his throat. Let's see. It starts with... Uh, I know you feel like you've been drinking a few kegs of stick wash. <laughs> but you need to center yourself. Among your possessions is a journal <laughs> that will shed some light on the dark of the matter. Pharaoh that can fill you in on the rest of the chant if he's not in the dead book already. Okay, this is tutorial actually. Yeah, I didn't read it when I tried clicking around and uh, I've killed a couple of guys in this room. Yeah, I didn't read, I didn't spoil the reading for the first read. <laughs> nice though. A little bit disappointing because I expected something better than the tutorial, but fine. Pharaoh, does it say anything else? Yeah, there's a bit more. More the pauses. Let's see, it goes on. Don't lose the journal or we'll be up the sticks again. And whatever you do, do not tell anyone who you are or what happens to you. Or they'll put you on a quick pilgrimage to the crematorium. Do what I tell you, read the journal, then find pa Farod. Farod, no. Ah, it's an PH, it's F. Farod. Is the sticks the f infamous river we are talking about? No wonder my back hurts. There's a damn novel written there. As for what uh, that journal... As for that journal I'm supposed to have with me, was there one with me while I was lying here? 
No, you were stripped to the skins when you arrived here. Besides, looks like you got enough of a journal penned on your body. What about Farad? Do you know him? Nobody I know, but then again, I don't know many people. Still, some Berks got to know where to find Farod. Uh, once we get out of here, that is. How do we get out of here? Well, all the doors are locked, so we'll need the key. Chances are one of the walking corpses in this room has it. Walking corpses? Yeah, the mortuary keepers use dead bodies as cheap labor. The corpses are dumb as stones, but they're harmless and won't attack you unless you attack first. Okay, that's reassuring. In fact, I did have to attack them first. I don't want to kill them just for a key. I don't know. I'm... I'm already... I'm without memories, right? But... I might have already had my own, you know, character and beliefs and stuff. I don't know who this guy was before being me. Being the nameless one, me. So how do I want to be? Do I feel more angry or more merciful? I don't know, I feel like being more aggressive. So I should attack one of these corpses and loot it for the key? Well, before you do that, arm yourself first. I think there's a scalpel on one of the shelves around here. Alright, search the shelves in the room. Right click on them if you want to examine any items you find. Alright, I'll look for one. One last thing, those corpses are as slow as molasses, but getting punched by one of them is like being kissed by a battering ram. If they start getting an edge on you, remember you can run, and they can't. Use it to keep some distance if you need to recover. Okay. It is weird though. They're strong, but they're dead. I don't know, I always, um, I always think that undead are weak, because they are just undead, but I'm terribly wrong. Every single fictional work proves me wrong, and yet I can't help thinking that. <laughs> to run. Ah, I think I have always running already uh, selected. So, alright, thanks for the advice. <laughs> yeah, I saw that they move. They are slightly animated. Of course, we have all our things here. I'm gonna activate this quickly, because I prefer to have it. I don't want to miss on anything. This lab is covered with dried blood and other remains. What about this lady? Looks like someone is in the middle of dissecting this corpse. And look at Morte. <laughs> what did he do? Oh, he's throwing his jaw or something. Right? What is he anyway? What's up? Can I know something about you? He's a fighter? Alright, well I suppose I... What is this? Oh, biting. Alright, very nice. Oh. I was wondering if there is a button here. I haven't found it yet that highlights these things because I'm very likely to miss some if they are not highlighted. Okay, we have these bandages. Heal, heals three hit points. Good. We have our healing items already. This is closed off. Closed off. Not closed off. By the way, I'm. You may have noticed that English is not my first language. <laughs> I always forget to say that. Oh, we have something here. Nothing. Nope. Nothing. more blood. This corpse looks like someone turned it inside out. A machine at the head of the table has peeled the skin off the forehead to give direct access to the skull. So, oh yeah, you can see that. There are actually, this one is opened, uh, well, there, and this other is open on the face. 
This one is different too. A bloody cloth covers the remains of this corpse. The stench rising from the body is almost unbearable. What about this one? Like the other corpses in this room, this one is covered in blood and completely gutted. So they're, they're using uh, the organs or this is just a funerary procedure? A system of rails is running through the whole room. It looks like the slabs in the room can be moved around on these rails. Well, that makes sense for a mortuary. Scalper, oh yes. Alright, you found the scalpel. Now go get those corpses and don't worry, I stay back and provide valuable tactical advice. You're the fighter! Maybe you could help me, Morte. I will be helping you. Good advice is hard to come by. Yes. I meant helping attacking the corpse. Me? I'm a romantic, not a soldier. I just get in the way. Really? <laughs> When I attack this corpse, you better be right there with me, or you'll be the next thing that I plunge this scalpel in. <laughs> eh, hey, alright, I'll help you. If you wish Morty to help you attack, simply make sure that both of you are selected. When you attack the corpse, Morty will join the attack. The attack. What's up with the AD today that I'm attaching to everything? Time to introduce these corpses to the second death, then. Pressing the A key also toggles the attack cursor. Let's go. Perfect. So let me see. I don't have my weapon uh, equipped, so I need to go. Where is it? To the inventory and uh, one tree piercing. Edged. Proficiency is edged. Not usable by priests for some reason. All right. I don't think my character will be a fist fighter, not at all. I don't know because he looks he looks now like a, you know, he looks like a tank. Just look at him. <laughs> he looks like a barbarian tank. Um Shri this shambling corpse looks like it has been dead for several years. The skin along its forehead has peeled back, revealing its chalk white skull. Someone has chiseled the number 569 into the exposed bone. I like the kind of um, images that this description, this description brings to my mind. I mean, it, it must be, it's, it's very, is original the right word? Probably not, but maybe, yeah, it's, it's intriguing. I mean, imagine this in front of you. Let's try talking to them. I'm looking for a key. Do you happen to have one? Uh, Chief, they can't hear you, alright, they're dead. But you're dead and you're talking to me. Yeah, but I'm special. That couldn't kill my zest for life. This corpse is here. Morte rolls his eyes. They probably didn't have much personality to begin with. I see. Look, Chief, watching you trying to swap the chant with these corpses isn't doing much for my morale. Let's leave the corpse talk for the barmies, alright? Alright then. So I can't really do anything to him? Anything else? Like, well, if they don't react to anything, examine. Oh. It kinda touched me. <laughs> this corpse doesn't appear to be carrying a key, and it doesn't look like it would be able to use one if it did. Its fingers are broken, as if someone smashed them with a hammer. You do happen to notice that its left shoulder is heavily bandaged. The bandages might be usable if the corpse was disposed of first. Hmm. Okay, yeah, makes sense uh, to kill him. Let's 
let's do it together, Morte. Well, <laughs> why is not working? Let him move. So somehow my A key is not working very good. Much better. Okay, oh no, it's it's the blue thing. No. Wait. Do it. Okay, they're doing it together. Ah, oh, that was quick, see. Using the bandages and uh, yeah, they don't mind anything really. Well, it's it's experienced then now, is it? So I want to try again with A. Yeah, the A is very weird because it gives me this flickering. Hmm. Okay, you have to do it immediately. You don't have to linger with the A button pressed. Fine. Uh. Oh, it hit you! Huh. Preparation room key. The head of this bronze key has been twisted around itself several times, so that it resembles a screw. If Morte is to be believed, it unlocks one of the doors in the preparation room. Okay. No game, I, I just lagged for a tiny second. No, no. No, no game, no, no. But it's this one or which one? No, I really wish I had one of those highlighting buttons to see all these things, all the things I can click on. No, that's not the right key then. Hey. We lost the key, which is fine. Psst, some advice, chief. I'd keep it quiet from here on. No need to put any more corpses in the dead book than necessary. Especially the femmes. Plus, killing them might draw the caretakers here. Killing the females in particular? Why? Why the females? Wait, a yeah, I'm I'm interested in why the females really, but yeah, I'm thinking some stuff, but could it be that? But I also I don't think you mentioned it before. Who are these caretakers? This is I'm curious about these caretakers. I, I need to have as many information as I can. Yeah, who are these caretakers? They call themselves the Dustmen. You can't miss them. They have an obsession with black and the rigor mortis of the face. <laughs> They're an adult bunch of gaulish death worshippers. They believe everybody should die sooner better than later. It sounds almost like my dream job. <laughs> my dream job, I don't know about the nameless one's dream job yet. I'm confused, why do these, do these dustmen care if I escape? Well, because you're an experiment or they need you for something, I don't know. Weren't you listening? I said the dust is belief. Everybody's got to die sooner, better than later. You think the corpses you've seen are happier in the dead book than out of it? The corpses I've seen here. Still, again with that female thing. But I, I, li I like this discussion more. The corpses I've seen here. Where did they all come from? Death visits the plains every day, chief. 
These shamblers are all that's left of the poor souls who, so, who sold their bodies to the caretakers after death. So the dusties are a, a cult or something? Okay, this 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 is circling dialogue, right? Before you said some before you said something about making sure I didn't kill any female corpses. Why? Well, are you serious? Look, chief, these dead cheats are the last chance for a couple of hearty bashers like us. I don't know if I have the thing. You don't have it for sure. Seriously. I was expecting this, but in a darker way. Now, Morte is being funny. We need to be chivalrous. No hacking them up for keys, no lopping their limbs off, things like that. Yeah, last chance, come on. <laughs> I think we got it. Chief, they're dead. We're dead. See where I'm going? Eh? Eh? You can't be serious. Chief, we already got an opening line with these limping ladies. We've all died at least once. We'll have something to talk about. But they don't talk. Right? They'll appreciate men with our kind of death experience. Wait, didn't you say before that I'm not dead? Well, alright. You might not be dead, but I am. So, you're not an undead nameless one? <laughs> You'll, he looks for sure like a, a dead thing. Uh, and from where I'm standing, I wouldn't mind sharing a coffin with some of these fine, sinewy cadavers I see here. Morta starts clacking his teeth, as if in anticipation. Do you want to eat them? Oh my god, that sounded so bad. Of course, the caretakers would have to part with them first, and that's not likely. Well, Morte is dead, but our um, protagonist may be not. Okay. Okay. Look, Chief, it's obvious you're still a little adult after your kiss with Dad, so I got two bits of advice for you. One, if you got a question, ask me, all right? The talk option from the quick menu. Alright, if I have any question, I'll ask you. Second, if you're half as forgetful as you seem to be, start writing stuff down whenever you come across something that might be important. Jot it down so you don't forget. If I had that journal I was supposed to have with me, I'd do that. Start a new one then, chief. No loss. There's plenty of parchment and ink around here to last you. Really? Hmm, alright. It couldn't hurt, I'll make a new one then. Use it to keep track of your movements. If you ever start to get cloudy on important things like who you are, or more importantly, who I am, use it to refresh your memory. To access your journal, select the journal. All right. Updated my journal. Let's check out this journal. I know it's here. Find Farod, find your missing journal. Okay, and Farod. Beast. Oh, information on him. Mortar is a talking skull. His sole weapon seems to be his mouth. Whether by taunting or biting, he seems to be along for the ride, whether you want him around or not. You are somewhat curious as to how he is able to float around. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like the Emoen of the situation because I like him already better than Emoen. God, I couldn't stand Emoen. <laughs> you are nameless. You awoke on a slab in the mortuary in Sigil. Oh, so we are in Sigil. In Sigil. Is the name of the plane or the place? Covered in scars and tattoos, your memory gone. Who has done this to you and why? You don't know yet, but you're going to find out. Yes, and I'm intrigued. Oh, my journal, alright. 
Let's read this first entry at least, then I will probably cut them and read them myself. My original journal has gone missing, so I've started a new one. I woke up in a place called... Oh, this is the new journal. Yes, of course, because on my quest I have to find my original journal. I woke up in the place called the mortuary. I don't know who I am, what I'm doing here, or even how I got here. The only person I encountered was a chattering skull called Morte. While he was checking my wounds, he discovered a set of directions tattooed on my back. And here are the, direct, the direction. And that's about it. <laughs> okay. Did I leave this message for myself? How did you do that if it's on your back? It's on your back, right? Okay. <laughs> Enough. Bloodstains, rust and other remains cover the surface of this metal slab. It is much larger than most of the other slabs and is sitting on a platform that allows it to be rotated. And still there are rails, so... We have one door openable. Alright. Hey, do you talk by any means, lady? The left side of this woman's face looks as if it was caved in with a club. I love... I'm... oh god, I'm <laughs> about to say something really weird. I love how the description bring forward these evocative images to me. I, I probably... what I want to say is not that I like gory stuff, because I don't, I don't really, but... I like the atmosphere that this game is, um, the atmosphere, yeah, the atmosphere that this game is setting for me. And her flesh sags in bruised, swollen clumps over her ruined skull. The number 626 has been stitched onto the corpse's right cheek, just below the eye, stitched. Uh, nasty wound you've got there. <laughs> the corpse continues to stare at you with its one good eye. Farewell then. Psst, you see the way she was looking at me, huh? You see that? The way she was following the curve of my <laughs> occipital bone. <sighs> you mean that blank eyed beyond the grave stare? What? Are you blind? She was scouting me out. <laughs> It was shameless the way she wanted me. Uh, you sound a bit like some <laughs> annoying guys are sometimes, that they see everything they want to see and they don't see the real thing. This woman is dead. <laughs> I think you and your imagination need some time away from each other. Oh god, look at this answer. She she was distracted by me. Now, I think you and your imagination need some time away from each other. Yeah, yeah, whatever. When you've been dead as long as I have, you know the signals. They may be too subtle for you to pick up on. But that's why I'll be spending my nights with some Lu Lucius recently dead cheat while you're standing around... Going, huh? What's going on? Where's my moo moo memories? Whatever, Morte, let's go. I mean, he's funny, but that's <laughs> a little bit creepy. You know, you need to find one with a personality, because these ones look just like the Silent Hill ladies. I don't... If you want to do anything with some of them, I don't think you have to ask or... I don't think they would mind either. I don't think you would have to court them, absolutely. Morte, I think. I, I'm, I'm going, I'm gonna be paranoid and walking everywhere and touching everything because I have no highlight to see what I can touch or what I can't touch. Should we talk with her too? The shambling corp corpse gazes at you with vacant eyes oh every 
every NPC has this kind of descriptions. Her skin is paper thin, almost wispy, it's like someone draped a sheet of cobwebs across her frame. Number 594 has been scratched onto her forehead with a charcoal pencil. My god, I love the detail. I would like to draw each one of their faces with charcoal pencil. Okay, so they're all unique. Fine. I so want to lie in her coffin. Seriously, don't be creepy. You're starting to be creepy. <laughs> it's weird, creepy, funny. What about you? This corpse is lumbering along a triangular path. Once it reaches one of the corners of the triangle, it pauses, then turns and staggers toward the, towards the next corner. It has 965 tattooed on the side of its skull. As you approach, it holds and stares at you. This one is a tattoo. Eh, looks like someone forgot to tell this sod to stop walking. The rule of trees. What do you mean? These corpses don't have much left in the attic, so they can't do more than one task at a time. When they're told to do something, they'll keep doing it until someone tells them to stop. This poor sod probably finished some task and they forgot to tell him. Oh, they're, they're, they almost work like robots. Who gives them their commands? Probably the... Yeah, I, I already forgot the name of them. Who give them the, who gives them their commands either one of the care, the caretakers here or else whatever necromancer raised them out of the dead book probably one of the caretakers here they're the ones who need the cheap labor after all what about this rule of trees updated my journal uh well the rule of trees is one of those laws about the planes Ooh, about things tending to happen in trees or everything's composed of three parts, or there's always three choices and so on and so forth. <laughs> that's... That's... I don't know if that's lore or tutorial still, but that's cool. You don't sound like you hold much faith in it. It's a lot of wash if you ask me. If you look for a number, any number, and try to attach some great meaning to it, you're going to find plenty of coincidences. Yeah, yeah, I think... I think like that too. These these zombies all have uh, these workers all have three numbers on them, and maybe they are just three numbers. It's not the actual amount of them, but that wouldn't make sense then. Interesting though. Okay, I wanted to examine the zombie a bit more. He doesn't have any items on him, it doesn't say. So... Let's leave him alone. It, it's... This game is so lovely. Even the little characters... I mean, the ones, oh, it's zooming much, the ones in Baldur Gate were less detailed. These ones are made with, I, I'm not saying that Baldur's Gate was not made with care, but there seems to be like some kind of particular love for details in this game. For anything. Will they get upset if we steal? <gasps> What's that? Oh my god. I love this image here. With this giant book and this floating guy. Power is above. That's one hell of a book. What is it? If I were to guess, I'd say that's the book where they scratch the name of every poor sod that's unfortunate enough to get dumped off here. 
could my name be in there? Uh, well, I guess to find out you'd need to rattle your bone box with that floating dusty over there. Oh, he's a dusty then? I'm not sure that's a good idea. Well, I need answers. I'm going to go and speak with him. Are you sure? Okay, he, he lets me choose. Fine, I want to explore around. Ah. Will he notice? Oh, he's coughing. Will he notice me? Oh, he's uh, disguising the way. There is nothing. This one looks terrible. Eh? Hey, receiving a room logbook? This huge logbook lists mortuary procedures in a tight scrubbed script. Ooh. Okay, there is something about the word, the words that they use that brings immediate images in my brain. Like, I could see how this book was written, like, the calligraphy. All shells entering the mortuary are to be delivered to the receiving room and logged with the scribe on duty before being embalmed or cremated. Or Okay. So they dispose of them, they don't use them for something. The records are to be checked to determine if the shell is one of the contracted. Okay, and if so, do not prepare the shell. Okay, move the shell to one of the preparation rooms. Contact the scribe on duty and notify him that a contracted shell is to be raised. Okay, to use them as... Um, workers i believe be certain that the shell is thoroughly stripped of its possessions before being sent to the preparation rooms the contracted workers are intended for simple manual labor and do not have the capacity to search and strip a shell mm -hmm. the faction is not responsible for any possessions <laughs> lost or items stolen by collectors who have brought these shells to the mortuary. The shell's possessions are to be stored in the receiving room until an initiate can be sent to claim them. Please, catalog all possessions in the logbook. Following this list is thousands of entries of bodies that of bodies that have been sent to the receiving room. As you flip through the rest of the book, however, you notice the last page has been cut out.